Hello everybody, Dick Coughlin, Brother Neuro here, and I think we all know what this video is about, because to put it one way, last week was a funny old week for me, and there's been a lot of fallout from it, and uh, I think it's about time I gave my side of the story. So, hit it. So oh, it's the English, defensely, we are the EDL, oh we chat about the Muslims and tell them they're all going to hell. Tell them to fuck off back home, cause they all fucking smell. I'm a patriot, I'm a nationalist, I am an infidel. We're the English, defensely, we are the EDL. We favourite every video made by Pat Condell. Chanting Allah was a pedo, and the Islam is evil. I was singing No Surrender, whilst we are in the prison cell. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I've got a bit of a story to tell you here. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I made a video, it was the last video I uploaded on this channel, called Tommy Robinson is a Poison Dwarf. Now, if you go to that video now, it got a lot more attention uh, in over the course of the last week. Uh, it's uh, And it's uh, the comment section, it's a bit of a dumpster fire. The day after I uploaded that video, <clears throat> I get a message sent to me on Twitter. Uh, this was a very interesting uh, message, and it was regarding Tommy Robinson. Uh, back in l last year, a video, uh, a video went viral that showed a, a teenage, a 15 year old Syrian refugee schoolboy from Huddersfield getting beaten up and bullied by another gang of school kids outside a playground of the school they went to uh, in Huddersfield. Um, when this uh, uh, footage came out, uh, one of the people who responded to it was Tommy Robinson, who on his Facebook posted a load of, uh, of, of, of uh, stuff about this boy, making various accusations claiming that this boy had attacked three girls and various other people. Anyway, suffice to say, these accusations that were made against this boy were completely fabricated. The family subsequently uh, had to move house. Tommy Robinson even deleted his, uh, his his previous post. But hey, as I've shown in the past, since when did Tommy Robinson care whether what he posted was factually accurate in the fucking first place? Uh, so yes, yeah, so the family had to move house, the boy hadn't, had, hadn't returned to school, uh, there were people waiting outside his house, and yada yada yada. And anyway, as a, as a result, it was all pretty nasty. Anyway, one of the things was this family wanted to uh, sue Tommy Robinson. They wanted to take Tommy Robinson to court, but they couldn't afford it. So they had subsequently set up a crowdfunding campaign in order for them to try and uh, to try and sort of raise funds so they could afford a lawyer. And it turns out they managed to get the money together in order to find a lawyer who would take the case. The lawyer in this case was a guy called Mohammed Sanimi Akundra who works for a solicitors in London called, I shit you not, Farouk Bajwa and Co, uh, Solicitors of London. I get asked by this guy that uh, they've decided that they're going to, Tommy Robinson is going to be served legal papers uh, so he can be sued by this family. And they asked um, me, do I want to be the one to go along to serve legal documents. Now I have to be honest, I'm not an idiot, so I was a bit sceptical as to whether or not this was legit. So I did a bit of background research, got a few people to verify that this was legit. Turned out it was. Uh, I spoke to the lawyer in question. Now th this is my entire, uh, this is my entire uh, involvement in this. I was simply going to be turning up with these legal documents to serve Tommy Robinson, his legal documents requiring this, which meant I had to go to his address, uh, I had to take, take them, and I had to deliver them to whoever was there. That was, all I, that was all I knew about it, that was all I was told. I even had to, in order to make it, uh, make it legit, I had to sign a contract for one day, which meant for one day, Dick Coughlin worked for a solicitors in London, and believe it or not, if I ever need to apply for a real job again, that is going on my CV. I, I, I was waiting for everyone else to get back to me on this one, and it turned out the plan was for the following Sunday, the subsequent Sunday, that, that was going to be the day we went to Tommy Robinson's house. Now, we, now I'll have to be honest with you, I'm not going to lie, I'm not a big tough guy, I don't pretend to be a big tough scary guy, so I was a little bit nervous. 
I had no idea as what the hell was going to happen. I wanted to make sure that my safety was going to be guaranteed because I don't fucking know what the hell's going on. And if any of you are wondering, let me just clear this up. If any of you are wondering why the hell did they pick me to do this, the answer is very simple. I don't fucking know. I don't have a fucking clue. But they decided to pick me and this is what subsequently happened. So last Sunday, I travelled down to London uh, I went to Farouk Bajra and Co. Solicitors. I met with uh, I went, met with Mohammed, so he can take us to uh, where Tommy Robinson lives, and I can drop off this uh, this envelope. And that is literally all we did. This is where certain things, certain accusations are being made. Completely and utterly irrelevant, by the way. All of these uh, accusations. The first one is. The first one is, well, why do you have to go to Tommy Robinson's house? Why can't you deliver them? That's why it's called serving someone their legal documents. You have to make sure that they are delivered to the person, because there is a 14-day 14, 14 uh, notice on them. You have 14 days in which to respond to them, and in order for that to kick in, there have to be, the, we have to know that the legal documents have been delivered to that person. More on that in a second, right? More on why that's relevant. Right? But also, it turns out that at the time, Tommy Robinson was in uh, Finland. Finland or Belgium, I'm not particularly sure. But his plane was due to land that day. In fact, it landed uh, whilst we were fucking there. And then we get a lot of people saying, oh, you went to his house when he wasn't fucking in, cowards. Again, completely fucking irrelevant. It doesn't matter. He can't pull that one in court, cat kid, by the way. You can't say, but your honour, I was not in the house when this bunch of soy boy beta cucks turned up in order to deliver the fucking documents. Therefore, this is null and void. That doesn't fucking work either. That's not a defence me- defense against anything that's happened. I personally had no idea. I didn't know till the morning of that day that that was what's going to happen. All I knew was I've got to deliver these documents. This was not about challenging Tommy or facing Tommy or ca- calling Tommy out a person. That was fucking it. Now, there were a couple of other people there. Yes, of course there were. Now, there was this the news then was reported in, in The Independent, in several other newspapers. Uh, my name was, I was name checked in The Independent. And since then, uh, there's been a lot of, uh, because the only two people involved in this, whose actual names are, act- whose names and faces are actually visible, is mine and the lawyer, Mohammed uh, 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 Kindra. Uh, because of that, we've tended to be the focus, but more so me. And I was on, <coughs> I was having the time of my fucking life on Twitter, getting, you know, just absolutely, you know, uh, absolutely having, having, a, having a whale of a time. It was a lot of fun. And also uh, checking my Facebook, which I had to put on private for a bit, but my Facebook message, I got, uh, currently we're sitting at 247 death threats. Uh, on on Twitter, very good. That's a record for me. Two hundred and forty-seven in the space of a week. Uh, in the face of the first two days, it was actually less than two days. It was about one hundred and thirty-eight. It worked out about one every minute. Here's a copy of some of the more uh, choice ones, including my responses to some of them. Um, but yeah, so I was getting I was getting absolutely fucking hammered, and that's when uh, the video views on my last video about Tommy came up. Uh, but then Tommy made a video that same day. He made this. Really, f- and he was in the airport with his bag of duty freeze, and it was a really fucking, it was a really whiny, and when you're in a fucking dr- online drama with Dick Coughlin, and you're the one who comes across as the whiny, you know, the whiny little bitch who's trying to get sympathy, you're in a fucking real sad state of affairs there. I'm standing there just, I'm just waving my dick in people's faces going, bring it on, motherfucker. But no, Tommy had to play the victim. Now, Tommy uh, made several claims in this that are strictly, simply fucking not true. And not only are they not true, I'm going to show you how not true they fucking were. Uh, The first claim he made uh, was that uh, we went there and there were people, uh, there were like five or six of us, um, and we were banging on his fuck. We were banging on the windows, and we were harassing this family. And we were fucking. We were there, you know, intimidate. There to intimidate people, and that's simply not true. I got no, no one. No one at any point was anywhere near Tommy Robinson's address. In fact, not only is we did no one get anywhere near. I didn't get anywhere near. Here's why: when we turned up at the address. Um, uh, but before we got there, <coughs> we were stopped by 
a, a police. But no, we went, he, he was there and he said that, you know, I told him why we were there. I told him why we were there, and he, you know, he knew exactly why we figured why, why we were there or what we were doing. He could tell from the start. There's three people with cameras, and there's me there. There's me there walking at the front. So he kind of figured, and then he led me down a fucking park, down a road. He led me far away. He said the cameras could not go. The cameras were not allowed to film beyond this point. When we get, but now he was going to let me put it in the letterbox of the address, right? Uh, uh, but he would, but before I could get to do that, two other policemen who were on the other side of the path stopped me and then said to me, no, we'll take that off you. We will make sure that this letter is delivered uh, and yada, yada, yada. Now, the other, now this is all on film, by the way, right? But Tommy was claimed, now Tommy then goes on to claim that this was not his house. He doesn't live there. Now, it is true that this house is not in Tommy's name. It's in his wife's name. <coughs> he kind of, he's kind of not allowed to get involved in mortgages since he was done for mortgage fraud and went to prison for it several years ago. So, he can't get involved. So, technically, it's not his house. But he does fucking live there, people. And here's how I know he fucking lives there. Number one, when we approached, the, approached it, I explained who I was. I've got an envelope with his name on it, his address. The police already knew why we were fucking there. And they confirmed, all of them, to me, right, that, they, that this was the address of the guy there. Now, the only explanation for this is that we happened to show up at the only other address in Britain where Tommy Ro where a guy called Stephen Lennon lives. And it's not, but Stephen Lennon just so happened, a guy called Stephen Lennon, who requires police protection. Now, why were the police there already? Nobody knew we were coming. And if they did, we didn't tell anybody what the address we were going to was. The only people who knew were me, the people in the car, and Mohammed the lawyer. So unless some of them, one of us, grasped ourselves up in advance, right, why were the police there? What were the police doing there? If that wasn't Tommy's fucking address, why were the police there? And also, why would the police, who were there to guard that specific address, confirm for us that that was where Mr. Stephen Lennon lives and that this is his address? And, make sh and then they promised to make sure that the letter was possible. Why would they do that? Are the Bedford police just fucking with us? Right? But no, Tommy's fans swallowed this hook, line and sinker and they went on about how we were banging on people's doors and harassing people. I would like to know how on earth Tommy, who was recording this from an airport, could possibly know anything that happened. Right? I am walking down the road with a policeman. There are two other policemen at the other end of the road. I would like to know. So you're saying that me, I went banging on the door of this and harassing the people there. I went and did that, did I? I went and did that, right, with three policemen there and got away with it. And I did it in the space of, what was it about, about a minute or so. Right? I don't know what to tell you. If you believe that Tommy Robinson that doesn't live at that address, and if you believe that Tommy Robinson knows what, that we were there harassing and intimidating people, then you're either so delusional you're beyond my help, or you're living in denial, right? I don't know what else to tell you. But here's why Tommy wants you to not believe that he doesn't live there. Number one, right? Number one is the fact that Tommy doesn't like the fact that, m that myself and a lot of other people now know where he fucking lives. And that is your address, Tommy. You can tell your fans whatever you want. This virtual reality that you live in is not the reality, is not real reality. And reality has a bitch of a way of catching up with you. You and I, Tommy, both fucking know that I'm telling the truth. You know that that was your fucking house. You know nothing fucking happened there. You know I turned up, I turned up with a letter. <coughs> Me, right? I turned up with a letter, I didn't even get near, I didn't get anywhere near your front gate, I didn't get anywhere near your place, and as soon as I passed the letter on to the police, who confirmed that was your house, and confirmed that you lived there, who were there because you were coming back from Finland, right, that's why they were fucking there, right, otherwise why the fuck else would they be, I then turned around and fucking left, because I had no desire to fucking hang about. 
right? Because I knew where the fuck I was. And I wanted to get the fuck out of there ASAP. The other reason Tommy wants you to believe that that's not his address is because... He, but he thinks that by denying that he lives there, that when the 14 day uh, notice is served, when the 14 days runs out, right, and he hasn't replied to the fucking court case, and he hasn't replied to those fucking, and he hasn't, uh, you know, d done anything, and then, then basically he's then become subject to, uh, you know, he's going to get served, he won't get served again, he'll then be have to be arrested. He thinks that he can deny that he had any idea that those papers were delivered, because if those papers were not delivered or were sent to the wrong house, then the court case so far is null and void, and those papers are meaningless. That's why he wants you to believe that he wasn't fucking there. FYI, the Staffordshire Bull Terrier was not fucking mine. That belonged to another geezer. And to be honest, that little bastard, his name is Murphy, and that little fucker kicked the shit out of me while we were in the car on the way there. Now let's talk about a couple of things first of all. If you are a Tommy Robinson fan, there are a couple of things you need to remember. Number one is Simple fact, simple sort of moral high ground. Even if you don't, if you don't agree with the fact that we went to his address to drop off a letter, right? Even if you don't agree with that, the fact is this, if you're a supporter of Tommy Robinson, you have no fucking place to, you have no right to sit there and support him whilst criticizing other people for turning up at someone else's address unannounced. Right, simply this. Secondly, you can call me a crackhead, a smackhead, even Tommy himself in one of his subsequent videos referred to me as an ex-crackhead. Something that he, something that is true, but something that only he and his supporters know because I fucking told you. And yes, I am an ex-crackhead, Tommy, but who the fuck are you to criticise anyone for having a substance abuse problem, sunshine? You don't have a spot for it. And the other thing was the fact that I take donations through PayPal and on Patreon. Which, by the way, you also have absolutely no fucking place to criticise me for doing so if you're a Tommy Robinson fan. Because let me tell you this, people want to sit there and talk about turning up at his place unannounced, right? You, you have, do you have any idea how long it took before my docs were being dropped? Not that it's that fucking difficult to dock my docs, because I've done it myself a million times. I've shown pictures of my street. There's a guy there who shows a picture of the street I live on with an arrow pointing at an address going, you know, saying number 50, that's where he lives. Now I don't live at number 50. That again, that's not even a flat. That is a, that is a place above a fucking, uh, a place where a lot of Japanese people run a fucking nail salon. Right? But again, it's just down the road from me. But if you don't believe me, here's a picture of me right next to it. Right? Here's a picture of me outside my actual fucking house if you want to fucking have a look, right? It's now been a week. It's now been a week. And I've had enough messages saying, tick tock, tick tock, we're coming for you, we're coming for you. Well, where are you? Where are you? I'm fucking here. I'm here to be fucked with. I said this on Twitter. I will say it again. You will not shut me up. I don't care how many fucking death threats you send me, I don't care how many photographs of my house you put online, I don't care how much you fucking... Th I had someone threatening to burn me fucking house down, people threatening to stab me, shoot me, do anything I want. I will not be silenced. If there's one thing that even the people who hate me the most will fucking agree on, is that you don't shut Dick Coughlin up. You, you want to know how to shut me up? You're going to have to kill me, motherfucker. And I ain't even joking when I say that. I'm not the toughest artist motherfucker on planet Earth, but you will not silence me. And I find it interesting that the guy... Can I ask, has anyone seen... Because I haven't been on Twitter, because I'm banned from there. Has Dave Rubin, or Paul, Paul Joseph Watson, or Tim Paul, or any of these other fuckers who bang on about freedom of speech... Right? Have any of these people been bringing up my fucking plight over the last week? of me being bombarded with abuse and me being subsequently... And then what happened was this. I subsequently started getting tweets reported and flagged on Twitter. Right? And these were not new tweets. These were really old tweets. Some of them went back as far as 2013. And I've posted 36,000 tweets. And they started t uh, flagging these tweets. And I started getting... So I knew it was only a matter of time before I either got suspended or fucking banned from fucking Twitter. But then what they started trying to do...
They then started trying to say, I know, let's take this guy and let's paint him as a racist. Now, unfortunately, what they did was then, they were going through my old tweets and they were taking screen caps of tweets I had posted from five, six years ago, some of them, some of them seven years old, and then they were sharing them around to show and paint me as a racist. Here's a screen cap of some of the fuck, you know, some of the things that were being shared around. And this was going around and all, loads of fucking people uh, were, were fucking sharing them. One of them was a guy who fucking bravely fucking shared shared this screenshot. Uh, his name's Nick Monroe or something like that. This is a motherfucker who shared, who's who's been who's endorsed tweets by Peter Sweden. Right, Peter fucking Sweden. Right, let me tell you something, guys. You cannot make me look bad. Right, that is impossible because I've be I've beaten you to it on that one. Also, one of the motherfuckers. I'll show you another tweet. One of the motherfuckers was this guy. Right, who I looked at his pat. I looked at his Twitter feed. This motherfucker works for Breitbart. He describes himself as a traditionalist and a conservative and a journalist. So well done. You're a racist and you do it for a living. I oh, fuck good for you mate. I give a shit what you fucking think. I give a shit about your fucking what you think looks good. Wait, you think I... Uh, you know what looks good, motherfucker, you fucking pork-scratching-faced fuck? Look at you! You look like a boil on the arse of a fucking rhino with a beard, and you're just trying to talk to me about what fucking looks good? I know what looks good, motherfucker. I don't need any of this shit. And then they started sharing them around and posting them. And let me tell you something, it's easy to fucking take tweets I've posted from years ago, rip them completely out of context, and paint me as a fucking racist. But here's the problem. Right? You, you guys seem to forget something. Right? Even if that were true, and I am a massive racist, that doesn't cancel anything out. It doesn't make Tommy right all of a sudden. I've got people, at one point, I started having, there were people on Twitter who were accusing me of racism and anti-Semitism, to whom I was disproving that by linking them to videos in which I debunk anti-Semitic and racist conspiracy theories and propaganda, which, having me subsequently linked to them, they then started arguing with me and disagreeing with the videos that I made. I'm trying to debunk that I'm racist to people who disagree with the things that disprove that I'm racist in the fucking first place. And I guarantee you, every one of these cunts were the same people who fucking sat there supporting Count Dankula, going, oh, it's just a joke. I thought it was just the left that had no sense of humour. Or it was the left that fucking had to resort to calling people fucking racist. So they didn't post that. But here's some of the other great ones. Here's some of the other great ones. They didn't just do that. This is a great one. This is from a guy called who goes under the name Ban the BBC and he's responding to Mike Stuckerbury and he posts this fucking thing <laughs> and, this, and he, he posted it along with a photograph and I swear to God I, I'm 39 years old right and I have never, it's been a long time since I nearly lost control of my bowels but I laughed so fucking hard right? I was on the train at the time when this fucking, I was on a train and I had to actually get up and leave and go to the toilet this is the photograph that this guy posted with this fucking toilet with this fucking message. It's a screen cap from the original Nazis Without Aptitude video. Now, apart from anything else, mate, you should know this, that swastika's the wrong way round. Also, you seem to be ignoring the fact there's a geezer in his underpants behind me. <laughs> <coughs> this is the level, that this is the desperation that these people got to. They were finding screen cap... Who... Now... I'm not saying I've got a clean record, but what motherfucker? what, how dumb do you have to be? How inbred do you have to be to have got to a point where that photo, you find that photograph and without actually fucking checking or finding out where it comes from, you think, well, this is obviously real. Well, where did this photograph come from? It came from when I was a Nazi. It was a photograph taken from when I was a Nazi long ago. Yeah, I had the tattoo removed. They're, they're, again, these people don't know who they're dealing with. They're dealing with a guy who has no sense of shame or dignity, right? who cannot be character assassinated because I don't have a character to assassinate in the first place. Right? You can take as many tweets out of context, but this was the best bit. There was this photograph. Now, this is a photograph of me in my, I, now, in, my, in my apartment. This is a photograph, and I took this and put it up on my social media. This was a couple of months ago. It's a photograph I took, along with several others, of me laying around. And, and, and literally, 
And at my count, right, at my count, people kept responding like, and, and sharing this photo around, saying, you know, sort of going, oh, is this you, LOL? Oh, look what we found of you. You didn't find that of me. That is not a leaked image, you dumb motherfuckers. Do you know where that photo came from? I posted it on my own Facebook. I posted it on Twitter and on Instagram, you dumb motherfuckers. You can't... What do you think? Where do you think that photo came from? Use your common sense. Is this camera on me? That's stupid. Use your common sense. I live in a one-room bedsit. What do you think? Someone walked in, a giant who's 12 foot tall, took that photo and leaked it online. That's a photo I posted. And I just find it hilarious now that as a guy who's been accused in the past of unnecessarily sharing illicit photos of himself, it's now, there, are now, there are now dozens, probably scores, of Tommy Robinson fans who have a photograph on their phone who, that, that they've downloaded of me in my underpants that they they are sharing. But this photo led to one of the funniest accusations, and this is what ultimately led to me getting banned from Twitter. Right, this photo, right, now that this guy here uploaded this same photo with, the, with a picture. Now you can see there's an image, of, there's an arrow pointing to, to the wall. Like, and you can see that the image he's pointing to, it, what it looks like from what it is, because it's not a clear image, because it's been the, the uh, effects have been altered, but it looks like a swastika, as if to go, oh look, he's got a swastika on his wall, on his wall. This guy, he's obviously a Nazi, because a Nazi obviously would be opposed to Tommy Robinson, yet. Yeah. So there you go. So he's got me, right? Do, do you want to know what that... Now, at this point, you know, I, I nearly fucking... I, I didn't know what to, whether to laugh or cry. Do you want to see what that photo, that swastika is? I'll show you, because this is the fucking wall right here. But that is the swastika right there. What that is, is a caricature that I drew of Jacob Rees-Mogg with his arms in a position that looks like a swastika. That is the fucking, that is what you've been sharing. A caricature, that's your big reveal. That's what you've got. That's it. And Tommy was reading, Tommy uploaded another video where he's reading comments. He's been on the Alex Jones show saying, six men turned up in masks to harass the people family. You, you don't live there, motherfucker. And all of this, and this culminated ultimately in me getting banned, permanently banned from Twitter. So I'm permanently banned from Twitter. I tried to open a new account, it didn't last long. And I'll be honest with you, I'm not too fussed. Twitter, more than anything else, the best way, the nicest way to describe Twitter is it's a, it's a, it's a good waste of time. But it ain't a fucking, it ain't the be all and end all. Well, because well done, Tommy Robbins fans. It took you two days and you've got my Twitter banned. And how did you do it, right? How did you do it? You, you did it because what? Because you took a load of tweets I wrote out of context. And I don't care. Right? You will learn this. I literally don't care. Since then, Tommy Robinson has now turned up at someone else. Mike Stuckerbury, a, a, a guy who's a journalist who is notorious for fucking getting under Tommy Robinson's skin. He turned, Tommy Robinson turned up at his address unannounced with some hezzy, heavies, live streaming, announced on video that Mike Stuckerbury is a paedophile, which, by the way, is a very common fucking occurrence. He likes to call people Nazis and accuse them of being paedophiles. It's very weird. They're weird, that, isn't it? Right? And, uh, yeah, and so Mike Stuckerbury is going to be so Tommy Robinson, he's pursuing legal action, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get in contact with Mike because when he does sue Tommy Robinson, I've told Mike, let me know, I want to be the one to serve Tommy Robinson. In fact, if anyone out there ever wants to sue Tommy Robinson, please let me know, and I will be the one to serve Tommy Robinson his t t legal papers because I will love this to be my thing. I've been doing this my I've been doing this for my entire adult life not just on YouTube I've been doing this my entire adult life this is what I fucking do if you want to fucking help me undo the work that they've done then share this video on Twitter for me tell people to subscribe and support this channel if you want to do even something more than that you can go down below to the link below there's a PayPal link down there send me a donation because you can help keep because this is what I do for a living and I've already seen multiple videos being shared around of people telling that telling uh, everyone to flag my content apparently I'm such a fucking threat to Tommy Robinson I am such a threat to these people that the only way they can deal with me is by silencing and flagging me which is weird for the freedom of speech crowd well good luck good luck trying to shut me up 
because I am not going any fucking where. You will not scare me, you will not intimidate me, I don't care how many times you leak my address online, I don't care how many times you threaten to fucking end my life, I don't care how many bricks you put through my fucking window, I don't care how many armies of fucking swastika tattooed cunts turn up at my front door. You can tell as many lies about me online, you can accuse me of being a racist, a Nazi, a not, whatever you fucking want, I'm not going away. I've been going after this cunt and every other cunt like him for 10 fucking years and nothing's stopping me now. If you think I'm ending this now, you got another thing coming. I'm going nowhere, so you better get used to it. I'm Brother Neuro and trust me, Tommy and Tommy Robinson's fans, the war has only just begun. Good night, may God be less, and remember, where there's no sense, there's no feeling. So oh, it's the English Defence League. We are the EDL. Oh, we chat about the Muslims and tell them they're all going to hell. Tell them to fuck off back home, because they all fucking smell. I'm a patriot. I'm a nationalist. I am an infidel. We're the English Defence League. We are the EDL. We favourite every video made by Pat Condell. Chanting Allah was a pedo and the Islam is evil. I was singing No Surrender whilst we're in the prison cell. Oh.